Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for his wonderful blessings he bestowed upon us every day. It's such a privilege and an honor to know that the Lord is on our side as the reigning king. He's sovereign and he's holy. Doesn't matter what you go through in this life, every challenge, every circumstance, every situation, all works together for the good. But you gotta be willing to let God work it out according to his will in your favor. I just came on live today just to just give God praise this, this afternoon because um, it's wonderful blessings of health and strength. Been going through some challenges in my own life and you know this last few weeks has really been a test of my faith. But I just want to say, you know, I thank God that I've made it, still going through and coming out victorious. It's been difficult, but in the midst of it all, God is still faithful. He's still doing great things for us in spite of the challenges that we encounter. We have to sometimes fall down and rest. Sometimes God lets you fall down just to rest, but he sustains you in your falling to lift you up. But you don't realize that God is working in your life to manifest his power. You never accomplish through the test and the trial the victory God is trying to show you in the midst of your going through. We complain so much, we murmur and grumble so much. We find ourselves going through some difficult moments in our life. But I tell you, going through this, uh, next surgery three weeks ago and a week later, found out I had an abscess in the throat that, that tried to take me out. It was obstructing my breathing and I almost died. But I thank God that his angels were watching over me all day, all night. And even in my sleep sometime, I found myself stopped breathing. But I thank the Lord because the word says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. And that's a true statement. God's mercy does endure forever, but he only operates according to your faith. If you don't have the faith to believe when you're going through your tests and your trials, then you're going to come out stronger more wiser, come out better. You find yourself always stuck complaining and grumbling about things that's not in your power to change. Sometimes God will allow you, like he did the children of Israel, to go through moments where he has to humble you. We get so caught up in what we're doing, the things we're working on, our own plan, our own agendas, and we neglect God. And God has a way that you can't go around, a way you can't get over. He has a way to, to get you to a place where you have to humble yourself, to seek his face, where he can point to you, his presence, give you a revelation and understanding. When you're going through different things, pay attention to the details. There are details, and there are messages in the details. Every situation you go through, you can learn something from it. Only if you're paying attention. We get so dis distracted in our issues, we don't pay attention to the details. That detail could be something that could be able to build you up, something to elevate you. But you miss it because you're stuck in the attitude of complaint. I just want to share this this afternoon that you are victorious and you're able to overcome anything that you go through in this life only if you trust in God. And God will begin to show you 
thing you haven't seen, haven't heard, or even imagined. Because that's how good and sovereign he is. He's holy, he's just, he's majestic. He's dependable, he's faithful. He's our Lord, a conquering king. He defeated every enemy that thought he was going to take you out. God was right there in the midst to lead you in victory. But we miss it because we're distracted. So I want to encourage you today. Whatever your distractions are, return to the Lord. Get your focus back. Let the Lord draw you back to himself. When you begin to see God in a different light in your situation. Because sometimes when it doesn't look like God is working, He's working. It doesn't feel good. It's uncomfortable sometimes. Feel like you're being squeezed in a box. But God is still working things out for you in your favor and His will for your life. If God didn't care about you, he would let you die in your mess. The reason why King David, when David wrote one of the Psalms, he said, Lord, if you were to mark our transgressions, who would be able to stand? If God was to judge you and judge me according to our situations, our sinful lifestyles, we all would be condemned to death. But he came to give us life and that life more abundantly. And the life he gave us is a free life with no restraints. A life that has no boundaries. A life that's limitless. It does have no limit to it. But all you have to do is receive it by faith, by accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. He will come into your heart. He will sit on the throne of your life. He will change it from the inside out. As I mentioned before, going through this, this episode with this, with this neck surgery, the abscess in my throat, how it, difficult swallowing food and drinking water, juice. Every day, because of my faith in God, this thing is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I can tell the difference because I'm able to eat, <clears throat> eat more, more things that I couldn't eat before. And I tell you that God is faithful to his children's cry. When you call on the name of the Lord, the Lord will answer you. The Lord will deliver you. The Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will empower you. He will give you the strength to keep standing when you feel like fainting. The word tells that if you faint in a day of adversity, your strength is small. But I don't know about you, but I serve a mighty, powerful, supernatural God who's greater than anything that can come against me. That's why the words of nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. Doesn't matter what the enemy brings against you, no matter who he sends in your pathway to, that's negative and always bringing um, gloom and doom to you and always trying to degrade and put you down, defame your character. You got to hold fast to your own personal conviction of faith. You got to be anchored in Christ Jesus that no matter what the enemy tried to do against me, it will not prosper. Because I am victorious in Christ Jesus. I am an overcomer. I am by the stripes of Jesus Christ healed and delivered. I'm able to do what God said that I do. I'll be what God said that I be. And I am who God said I am because of the word of God. And when God speaks a rhema word, a word from the Spirit of God just for you. That word has power. That word has authority to overcome any negative word the enemy has spoken to your life through any avenue, even the things you spoke for yourself. And the word of God will empower you to keep moving forward in your destiny. Keep moving forward in your promises. Keep moving forward in your purpose because you were created with purpose inside of you. If you don't know that, God created you on purpose. He didn't make a failure. He didn't make a quitter. 
he created you on purpose because he knew that you are the one that he placed in the earth to help fulfill his calling on your life to draw souls to Christ. We all have an assignment as a child of God, and that's to draw men to Christ by our testimonies. That's why the word says we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Our testimony, our story, is how when I was going through difficult moments in my life, God brought me out. When I was being in a place in darkness in my life, I couldn't find my way out. God delivered me. That's your story. I was facing death on my sick bed and the doctors couldn't heal me, but God did. That's your story. Even though sometimes you slip up and make mistakes. Excuse me one second. <clears throat> Throat still messing up, but it's okay. But even in your mess ups, in your hang ups, the love of God never fails. He still loves you. He still cares for you. He's still drawing you to himself. He's still forgiving you. He's still cleansing you, perfecting you. Because you are his child. And as a child of God, it doesn't matter what you go through in this life. You got to know for yourself without a shadow of a doubt that I belong to a mighty God and he belongs to me. And that I'm born again, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And that the power of God is working in my life every day to will and to do according to his good pleasure. So you be encouraged on the day, no matter what you go through, don't let the devil put down in your mind that you're not able to do what God said you can do. Some of you are business minded. Some of you are at the verge of starting businesses and at the verge of traveling the countries. It, it doesn't matter what God has placed in your heart, the ambition God has given you. You got to believe for yourself that the assignment on your life is greater than you are. And that God will fulfill the call in your life because you trust in him. There's somebody on here that has apostolic anointing. Some have a prophetic anointing. Some are evangelists. Some are teachers. Some are prophets. Some are apostles. God placed that unique gift inside of you for the edification of the body of Christ. It's not just for you. Let God use you. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up. He will exalt you. He will cause you to be expanded. He will cause your gift to grow and nurture inside of you to make you who he wants you to be, to be effective in the kingdom of God. Too many people are in church Sunday after Sunday and still don't know any purpose. Still don't know why they're there. But when you begin to seek God's face, and that's God. Why am I here? What is you call me to do? God himself will begin to show you by his spirit what he called for you to do in your life. As a guaranteed promise we have from our, our Father God above, he will show you the pathway that he has chosen that in his presence is the fullness of joy. You'll find true satisfaction when you rest in the presence of the Lord. Do what God called you to do. He gave every man, I said this morning on my prayer line, that God gave every man a measure of faith. Some faith is greater than other people's faith. Whatever measure of faith you have in God, use it. Don't sit on your faith. Hope deferred make the heart sick. And what that means, hope that's been seized is inactive. No drive to believe anything God promised. That's when your hope is deferred. And they make you sick spiritually because you're not doing what God called you to do. And I, I've learned it myself through the years that if I don't do what God called me to do, I become anxious, become rambunctious. I got to do something. Being at home for these last three weeks has been a test because I'm used to being gone, used to doing something for the kingdom of God. But I have many people come to even my mother, even my sisters, said the same thing, that God had to sit me down to rest to recover. Not only that, to replenish me with the strength that I need to do the work of the kingdom. And I thank God that I'm learning. The more I've been sitting down these last three weeks, the more revelation God I've been pouring into my spirit. Because I need to hear what God has to say in order to teach his people the word of God. I love teaching the word. I love preaching the word. But most of all, I love God's people to see them grow in their potential 
and the purpose God has called them. And we have to get to place in ourselves where we just rest in the finished work of the cross and allow God to direct us for the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delighteth in his way. You find your true satisfaction when you take pleasure in doing what God calls you to do. Amen. So you stay encouraged from the day and know that the Lord loves you. He cares about you. I love you. And I thank you everybody for their prayers. Thank everybody for the encouraging remarks, the words they have spoken to help me be encouraged in the midst of discouragement. Because trust me, I have discouraging moments going through this. And moments where I'm like, why do I have to do this surgery? Why does this have to happen? Why, 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 why? And I realize it's okay to have those thoughts. It's okay to question why. But don't get into a place where you allow your questions to cause you into depression. Because sometimes we question God why certain things happen to us and we get into a slump in a dark place of depression. But I want to encourage you that no matter what your storm is, whatever you're going through right now, many people I've spoken to the last three weeks are going through some tremendous, terrible situations. But yet, they're standing they're trusting God to bring them through it. And I always encourage you today, whoever listens to this video, even from the day after today, no matter what your storm is, know that peace is still abides in your storm. When Jesus stood up at the end of the ship, when disciples were panicking, when a storm arose in the boat, he stood up and he commanded, peace be still to the elements and the winds and the waves had to obey his word. And I guarantee today that same word is spoken over you. Peace be still. I speak peace in the name of Jesus over you. Peace in your situation, in your storm. Peace in your mind. Set you to rest your mind. Stop having overthought, overthinking. Stop trying to get to a place, trying to figure things out yourself. I speak peace in the name of Jesus. That you learn how to just cast your cares upon the Lord. Let him fix it. So he can handle it better than you can. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I praise you, O God, for every person that hears this video today, O God, that you encourage them, that you lift them up, O God, in their countenance. Let your joy flood their hearts. Let your peace abide, O God, that they would know that you're right there in the midst of what they're going through, working things out for the good in their lives. For you send your word, Father, all things work together for the good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. Now manifest your word, God. Let the anointing destroy the yokes. Let your power break the yokes and the bondage off their shoulders. Let their minds be set free, O oh God. Let their hearts be transformed, metamorphosized, to become more and more like you, Father God. Let's, we ask you to forgive us, God, for the times we failed to trust you, the times we failed to depend on your word, the times we doubted your word. <coughs> Ask, Father God, that you do it for your glory right now in the mighty name of Jesus. That you would let them know that you're right there, Father God. Give them the encouragement and strength to keep standing and trust in you. Trust in the Lord with all their hearts and lean up to their own understanding. But in all their ways, acknowledge you and you shall direct their path. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Cornell. Thank you for tuning in, my friend. Amen. So I lift up my brother. He asked me to pray for Cornell, Cornell Rogers. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for Cornell right now, God, for his family, for his sisters, his brothers, so God, everybody, everything they're going through right now, God, their family, Father, everything that's been attested, even, Father, with the uh, nephews and, Father, God, and, and their financial situation, God, and their health, if you give them, Father, the strength they need to endure, Father, God, everything they're going through right now, God, that you would cause the work out in their favor, God. Father, even, Father, the job he's looking for, Father, I just thank you for open doors, oh God, for a financial increase to rain upon his, his hands, oh God. Everything he touched would be blessed and highly favored of God. I bind every demonic force, every attack, every self coming against him and his sisters, oh God, and their mother, oh God. Every attack the enemy brings against them to bring any form of discouragement unto today, oh God. I rebuke the unclean spirit of the enemy to try to torment their minds. Father, that every bill will be paid for every debt being counseled, God. I believe that you are Jehovah Jireh, God. You shall provide everything they have need of, God. 
Even when they're lacking, God, you stand in the gap to fulfill that need, God. I believe by faith, oh God, that you're able to do it. You say in your word, give, and it come back to your good measures. Press down, shaking together, and running over, shall men give them to your bosoms. Father, give them the heart to sow a seed in faith and believe, oh God, that this seed will be the avenue of God to reach the heart of God, to release, oh God, into their hands and increase an abundance of wealth into their hands, oh God. I thank you. I praise you. I give you glory. give you honor. In Jesus' name, it is done. Amen. Amen, my brother. God bless you. you stay encouraged, man. God got you. He's gonna, things are working out in your favor. Don't, don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged today. It's going to work out. May not feel right, feel right right now. May not look like it's going to work out right now. But know that God is working things out in your favor. And you all stay encouraged. They, they lost their uh, their father about uh, a couple of months ago. And it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge. But I'm believing that God is still confident in broken hearts and binding their wounds. I'm believing that many of you who are going through grief right now, the Cole family, losing grandfather Cole, I believe that God is still there as a consoler. He's a comforter. He's your strength. He's carrying you in the bosom of his arms. And he's loving on you. And he knows the sorrows that we bear. You know, and one thing about this, God knows the pains that we bear. But he's able to soothe our pain and remove our spirit of doubt as we trust in him. Amen. So you continue to be encouraged, be lifted up in your faith to trust God to carry you through this time of grief. It's okay to cry. It's okay to grieve. It's okay to get in a place of sorrow. You know, that's normal response of human nature when someone dies in our, in our family or someone close to us. So I want to encourage you today. Don't let nobody tell you you need to stop grieving. Don't let nobody tell you you need to stop crying. Don't let nobody tell you how long you need to grieve. You know yourself. You know when you're coming through. You know when you're coming out. But you stay encouraged because God knows to let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And my father helped me in the mansion when I saw what I told you. God knows the sorrows of a heart, but he also knows how to comfort the brokenness and bind our wounds. So I encourage you today, if you're out there today and you're going through a storm of grief, it's okay. Release it. Just release it to the hands of the Lord. Let God be the one to give you the strength to get through this and carry you through and bring you out where you find his peace, it's love and it's joy in your heart like never before. Amen. So you all stay encouraged on the day. I love you and God bless you.